Hello everyone, welcome back. So let's do another example with these analytical solutions to our beam deflection problems. Now you can do this on your own if you want to, but I'm going to walk you through it again um, and we'll just jump right into it. So this time what do we want to know? Well, we want to know the equation for the elastic curve of the beam, the deflection at B, and that's it. So let's try it. Okay. So first off, we have to do our free body diagram and solve for our reaction forces. Now, I'm not going to spend much time on this. It's just the same steps we always take, which is some of the moments around a particular point and some of the forces in the y direction. We solve and we get our equations right here. And do they make sense? Well, we've got more force over here next to A, which has the distributed load right next to it, which in my opinion makes a lot of sense. So I'll go forward with that. Now we're gonna look at the beam segment. We're gonna go from A to B. Um, I could do the entire beam, but that'd be kind of difficult because my load only extends over a part of the beam. So what's my moment equation inside of that? What's my moment equation inside of that? Well, let's look and see if I can figure it out. So we cut right here, and you can see I've um, shown that right there. We draw our moment and our shear force. We always draw them in the positive direction. Even if they end up being negative, you start off drawing them in the positive direction. And we calculate. So what do we have here? Well, we have a um, force right here, AY, and we have our distributed load. Those two things are going to be causing a moment. That distributed load, well, you know, it's kind of difficult to see here, but what we realize is that the distributed load, its magnitude, is going to be W times X. That's going to be the force exerted by it. And if we're going to say that's happening at a certain point, well, it always happens at the middle of a nice, flat, constant distributed load. So it's going to happen at X over 2. So that's where this WX squared over 2 comes from. And then this one is just the moment caused by that initial reaction force. So neither of those are too difficult. And we get our equation for the moment just like that. Now it's very important that you notice here I said beam segment AB because I asked for the elastic curve of the entire beam not just that beam segment this time. So we're probably gonna have to do this again. So what we can do now is we can start integrating our equation. I'm gonna go all the way down and so we start our moment one we have it right here. We integrate once, we can integrate twice, and there's, there's no crazy integrals here. It's just, you know, going from x squared to x cubed. It's, it's not bad. So if you have some crazy integral, then you most likely have messed up in how you're setting up your equations. And you should rethink the problem. Now, I've got two boundary conditions. However, we already have, you know, one of those answers. We know that at x equals 0, the deflection has to be equal 0, which is fantastic. So we plug it in there and we get that C2 is equal to zero. Perfect. Perfect. Now, there is an issue though. Because what is C1? We only have one boundary condition. Well, what we're gonna have to use then is the slope at B. We're gonna have to connect. We're gonna have to use a continuity condition, which is saying that yes, there's one half of the beam that we just looked at right here. And now we're going to have to look at the other half, and we're going to say, well, obviously they connect. And when they connect, they've got the same slope and same deflection. So I'm going ahead and getting my slope right here at point B, even in getting it in my terms my constant. And we'll come back, we'll fill in things as we get a little bit more information. If we also want to, we can find the deflection at B. The deflection at B. So once again, we've gotten everything we want, but still we have that constant C1 that we have to get rid of. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it by considering the second beam segment. So this is BC going from L over 2 to L. So first we calculate our moment equation, which is not very hard. Make sure you draw your moment and your shear force in the positive direction. And then after I've done that, I can solve for my moment. I take this in the moments around this particular point, and there's only one force acting, causing a moment there, which is this force right here. The big thing to be careful though is that this is a distance L minus X, because we're going all the way into the beam, and then coming back a distance X this time. Okay? 
be careful with how you're setting up your equations. Okay, be careful how you're setting up your equations. If you're not careful, things will go wrong. Okay, now with that in mind, we have all of our values here. We've got an equation for the moment, which is nice and simple. Now I know this looks simple to begin with, however, if you just do a little bit of algebra, you can get it to simplify. And then we're going to do exactly what we did earlier. We're going to integrate it. So we have our first one. Don't forget the EI, that's important. Then we integrate twice. We get a constant C3 and C4, and you're like, wait a second, we couldn't even solve for the first two constants. Now I've got two more. What is going on here? Well, the issue is these are new, two new constants. We have one boundary condition, and guess what? We're going to have two continuity conditions where these two beams connect. So first off, boundary condition. We know the deflection is zero at that second support, which is at L. So we plug it in and we get, okay, well, plug in L in here and none of them disappear. Oh my, I still got C3, I still got C4. It's not looking good. Are we going to get stuck here? Hopefully not. But I think we're going to be okay. Also, because we have this right here. We know what the slope is at B, okay? And do you notice what I'm missing from this equation? No C4. That's gonna be helpful for later. We don't want the C4 to be here. So we have the slope at B. So we plug in X is equal to L over two and we can get the slope. We can also get the deflection at B where we said X is equal to L over two. And this is coming from the opposite side, the opposite side this time. So before I was doing my equation from this way, now I'm going back this way and they're going to meet in the middle. So I have my slope and my deflection at both points. And I know they have to be the same at both points. So I can set up an equation saying, well, the slope has to be the same at the point and the deflection has to be the same at that point. So with this, I have one two, three unknowns, two equations, and we also had that equation earlier um, for the deflection at um, point C, which gives us three equations and three unknowns. It is not fun at all, but if you do some algebra, I'm not going to do it right here, I, you can do the algebra, it just, it's not always fun. Um, you can solve to get what C1, C3, and C4 are. And then with that, you can begin to plug it back into your equations. And you will have, in this case, two equations for the elastic curve, one from zero to L over two and one from L over two to L. And you can find the deflection at point B if you wish. Okay, now there's a lot going on here, but the biggest thing is you just don't give up and eventually you'll have enough equations to solve. Now for any problems I'm doing on assessment, they're not gonna be this complex. There's always gonna be a lot of test cases usually that you can use to help solve these problems. But I still wanna show you, even if we go over it fairly quickly in this, the steps that go into solving these equations by hand. Solving these equations with no extra help. So thank you for your attention. I hope this helps you. And I will see you all next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.